Hello guys, welcome to Rabbit and More. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Modin, a passionate rabbit farmer based in Accra, Ghana. And today I'm coming your way with a new form of video. Maybe I'll be reacting to other rabbit farmers, etc. But one very important one I want to start with is Dr. Daniel of Farm Up. Uh, Dr. Daniel is well known for his poultry prowess in the African uh, farming space. Uh, he's a very open and frank and transparent farmer out there and very young guy very inspiring a medical doctor by profession <clears throat> and uh, we know a lot of things the guy has done and some of the stereotypes he's been changing ever since then um, and so we know he raises a lot of other things poultry sheep cut uh, cattle goats uh etc even pythons monkey etc so um i know he always kept rabbits i didn't know he had some at home on the farm when you watch the videos you would see some rabbits where he kept them more of like the free range style but i never knew he had some at home where he raised personally and so today we are going to go into this video he posted today which is how to easily raise rabbits um at home so uh let's look at some of the things he does his setup etc and if there are some mistakes and what we can learn from it as beginner farmers now mind you this is someone who likes to research a lot and learn a lot but uh, it doesn't mean that people like this can't make mistakes uh, he is always not shy of putting out his mistakes out there to share with other people because that's what his whole channel is built about to make mistakes so others won't make the same and he keeps on experimenting and learning etc um so without much ado i'll be skipping some of the videos because I, I i'll be skipping to some point so that we can get the most lessons out of it and so let's get into it right now i started with just a few rabbits i think i had about 10 rabbits uh, one male and nine females now unfortunately i actually lost one of the males and that was due to a parasitic infection i didn't know it was a parasitic infection i tried to figure it out but i learned later on that it was a parasitic infection i actually had to deworm and treat all the rabbits for the parasitic infection but after that we've been good so literally i just have one meal so uh here is the thing this is one thing i would like to make us learn first off uh, with the parasitic infection one of the reasons that could be happening is because of an unclean environment so for example when you look at his cage structure he decided to go with a wooden structure and um, as you can see from the angles from the edges the corners right now i don't know if you can see my mouse over there in this corners right here if you're using the wooden structure make sure you don't have corners like that's where the rabbit can urinate because they will go to those corners when you can see this corner right here right where the two rabbits are facing right in this corner right there that is where they usually will will, will pee will, will urinate and it continues like that and with time it builds up the dirt builds up and the parasites will become an etc and it won't be uh, a good environment and so my suggestion will be that when you're building um wooden cages because that's the only option maybe you have it will be better to do metal cages directly but if you want to go with the wooden cage route just go with the wooden cage but those edges should be on the outside there is a way to build it to keep the inner sides all flat you know with no there will be corners but no resting corners like you see over there and also with wooden cages i will advise that uh once every week uh, or once every two weeks you thoroughly clean everywhere you know with disinfectants etc scrub everything etc and um, because of how the urine build up right there you should always be also looking at reinforcements for the mesh that is on the floor because it gets rusted and with time it will start breaking away and uh, some animals may even come there to attack if you have cats at home if you have dogs at home uh, even in some areas where there are snakes they will always find their way in there to try to prey on the rabbits and so these are things that you will you would uh, want to look out for as a beginner farmer and to raise rabbits at home uh, if you're not doing it on a on a large scale and it's something you just want to eat yeah you can forgo certain things but the rabbits are very clean animals and because of that giving them such an environment won't be healthy for them and won't be healthy for you either because you might wake up one day and lose everything luckily for him he lost one he learned the mistakes and then he improved on it and he solved the issue so let's continue with the whole uh video thing that i'm using to breed but with time i'm going to have to replace it because you know you can't keep using the same the same male so the cage as you see it is in two levels okay so um we see his caging style right here he's gone with the wooden cage and also has the gutters over there to collect the urine etc and so this is something you need to also decide from the get-go do you have a garden do you have a backyard farm you want to 
use and harvest the manure you get from the rabbits to actually um, grow those plants. Rabbit manure is actually very, very good. Um, and unlike the chicken manure where you have to keep for some time before it can be effective, the rabbit manure isn't so you can use them right away. And so it is very, very good. And so adapt a style that works for you, you know, and if you're going more commercial, uh, maybe you don't want the meat you want to eat and also sell to your neighborhood, etc. You should keep uh, something that can harvest this and sell to other farmers and maybe use this to grow other vegetables at home. And so finding a way to harvest the urine and uh, the poop that comes out from the rabbits, it's always going to be a very good thing. That is the strategy he is going for right now. Um, later down in the video, we'll talk about some other things. But for now, that is his step setup at home. I prefer... Um, the, the only uh, criticisms I have is the inner side, the inner portions that needs to come out to stop the buildup of urine and, and poop in there. That builds up parasites over time. Um, at the same time, looking at the whole structure, it looks good because he can collect the urine, etc. And uh, the type of tubes he's using, these tubes that he's using for the uh, as the drinkers, you know, to give them uh, water. These are things you can easily disconnect and wash. Um, you can uh, pressure wash them, actually, so it's always okay. Um, and so look for what is okay in your area to also use. If you want to use pots where you can actually clean them later, you can do that. Problem with that is that rabbits tend to play a lot and they tend to overturn things sometimes. They have some weird <laughs> mannerisms, etc. And so sometimes they may overturn the food, they capsize the food, capsize water, and you wouldn't have anything. And if you are not at home, they may... Uh, go hungry which is not that good and so you should keep it in a way that is more sustainable so i think using this type of lines to always give them water is actually a very good step let's continue the video and then for the drinker system we have well it's an automated drinker oh it's a semi-automated but really it's automated so we have a jerry can over here that carries the water as you might see it yeah so you put the water inside there and the water will move through this tubing and then it will go inside the drinkers when the rabbit wants to drink water it will just come here and then when it presses this the water comes out you see so the good thing with the automatic water drinkers is that you are able to know how much water your rabbits actually do drink you know in the in the very hot afternoons especially in in some of the west african regions ghana nigeria uh benin togo etc uh, we very we have very warm areas there, but I think in Uganda and Kenya, etc., and East Africa, they have some cold temperaments also there. So temperatures also there. So um, when you are in these regions, you need to always make sure you know how much water you are giving them because uh, during the day they may drink a lot of water because they are feeling very hot, and, and so they may drink a lot of water to control their temperature. When you have something like that, you may be able to determine. How much water they drink over time in maybe every 24 hour space and you know exactly when to fill it and when not to fill it up and also you can always go in there clean it so that it doesn't um, build up dirt over time so that is the some of the plus for it but when you put it in those uh, drinkers you pour it maybe in a can or something and you put it there and they pour it let's say you give it to them in the morning right out of the gate maybe as you went out they pour it and you do not know whether they've taken water or not so for more accountability and record keeping i prefer this style more so let's continue with the video yeah so that's how the nipple system for the rabbits works and then for the feeding system we have this as you can see so this is pellet feed so there will be the rabbits are pet fed on pellet feed it's nutritive it's good made from natural materials no chemicals nothing and we just provide it maybe once in a day. You just don't provide too much. Put it inside here, and then when you close, the rabbits actually do come and feed on it. They do a bit of wasting, which you want to avoid because, again, the feed is not, is not too cheap. The other thing that could be done is that you can provide the rabbits with grasses, you know, grasses like this, uh, weeds, you know. So over here, he goes out in the garden to look for grass, uh, pick some of them right here as you can see he's picking them right here and brought to them this is the water spinach i think and then he brought it to feed them um the the thing is that he fed them raw like that but in the video he stated something that is very 
uh, important, which I want you guys to pay attention to. Now, ideally, what I'm doing is not ideal because when you get out vegetation like this to feed to rabbit, you should wilt it. What that means is that you need to put it in the sun and let it, you know, lose the moisture a bit. Because if you give it directly to the rabbits like this, uh, the, the rabbits can get blood. That is a very good one. A lot of the times we are excited to have rabbits on the farm and directly when the rabbits come on the farm, we feed them with greens. I've done those mistakes before, but usually you should wash them with salt water. Uh, try to let them out in the sun for about three to four hours. Let them wilt, uh, like he said, draw the moisture out basically and just feed it to them. If you can also pre pre uh, prepare it as hay, then you can always keep some percentage of hay in the in their cages as well as the pellets they feed on right and in africa uh, mostly we create our own pellets etc at home we mix our own food and so uh, wherever you are whatever food is available try to give them and also learn from the industry there are some um feeds that help and there are some that do not help and so once you're learning you go on that curb etc and you'll be able to learn a lot of things so this is a very good one and it's a good thing for you to learn out there i know a lot of people can just give greens but it causes bloat and it you may wake up one day and all your animals are dead one other thing that is also very important he picked this one from his own backyard and so he has control over it now in most cases um we go out there in the bush in the wild in the forest to go and get this type of things and come and feed the rabbits and right now with the menace of um pesticides we have around with some farmers in the bushes etc uh, people just spray things anyhow they want and so you do not know what you are bringing to your home to come and feed the rabbit that's why it's encouraged that you watch but even with that make sure where you are going to pick the foods you are a hundred percent sure that the rabbits will be safe eating the grass you are bringing from that side those are some things you need to know because they are very important so over here we can see him hanging it for them to eat uh, this is a very good practice you hang it for them to eat and then with time um they won't be stepping on it they would learn to just pick it up from the top which is very very good because um once you put it down on the floor they step on it it becomes weaker they pee on it they defecate on it which is not healthy for them in turn now there are some weird things you are going to see also in rabbit farming where you will see them eating some of their uh their poop you know their their defecation you see them eating it that's because uh, it, it still contains some uh, vitamins or minerals or some nutrition for them and so sometimes they do eat it um, it could be a weird habit you can also cut it off but in most cases it's not as bad um, and so this is overall what i'm checking over here let's go and see some of the other things he's doing in the video uh, there were some things he also showed his rabbits are doing well but here right now in this footage i want to show you something let's continue this is like the delivery or nursery house and you can see baby rabbits inside here but we have some more outside i don't know how, why those ones are outside you can see them under her over there they are breastfeeding i don't know how they manage to come out so those ones are outside primarily because uh, of the litter box now when you look at the litter box it's made of metal he made them out of i think aluminium or something like that i don't know this metal sheet foil he made them out of it which is not so good i wouldn't advise anybody to do that use wood to do it so that you can also uh, use mesh underneath it uh, so they can have breathing uh, some some air and they'll keep always dry because when this this time when they poop when they uh, urinate it covers them up everything so i would not advise this very one you're seeing in the shot also you can see um the entrance to the kindle box is low it's very very low and so the rabbits are able to come out at very young age which is not good you should elevate it you know you should always elevate it um, to a height this is what it looks like you see how the inside looks like very dirty so you should uh, give a plate down there so that i mean they can the urine can always go through so look for a mesh that have very very smaller holes that can fit in very very well and also make sure you elevate the front part in a good way so that the mother can be the only one to enter in a very good and safe way uh when the kids are usually around three uh three weeks they usually will jump out and come but for this very one i see in the shot they look very too young to come out there and the mother can step on them and they may die as you can see in the shot it's not really a good thing so if you are starting out be very careful to do this if you can learn how to build the the, the nest ne the nest box or litter box yourself it will be very helpful for you 
if you can't just uh, let a professional build it for you and it's going to help you a whole lot now sometimes the mother also goes inside and once he's jumping out some get stuck on the nipples and that is how come they will get out of the box now he's doing his cleaning bits we can see how the cleaning is going on also one thing to note is that uh to gather the manure you should also know that these things pile up over time and it stinks right it stinks and so if you're keeping out the backyard you don't want to be having this foul smell so you can use sawdust to control it you can also use ash from the fire uh you know every now and then you disinfect the area a little bit um so that you control the smell let me know how you control smell in your local area and maybe some suggestive things you do that may help other people and the urine he pours them then into this can over there and then source it that, that way you prevent um, mosquitoes from coming around because trust me if you keep it in the open like that mosquitoes do come around a lot and once they come they will also be attacking the kids and then they will, they will grow so you can see the plants he's showing in the shot he uses the manure to uh, take care of his plants and you can see how well they are growing it's very good a uh, very good source of uh, fertilizer for for growing crops flowers etc at home and so this is something you can always do but this is one mistake that dr daniel has done in the video that um i think you should you guys shouldn't repeat so he has um like story one up and one down at the top he's keeping the rabbits in there and at the very bottom he's keeping the chickens on there now these chickens do uh, get attacked by diseases a lot and uh, rabbits can also take some of these diseases one primarily is coccidiosis right and so be very careful how you mix the two i won't you can keep them on the same compound but like to just put them on stack them on top of each other like that i won't advise so this is one thing that i would definitely say is a no-no for me i don't know what your experience is with keeping rabbits like this rabbits and and and, and chickens above each other it is something i won't advise and so be very careful when you're doing something like this uh it may come back to hunt you in the rabbit house and try to kill the rabbits and but they haven't totally completely not i think it's just one of the puppies i have a belgian malinois at home and it's it's the one that was really trying to disturb the rabbit actually let me go and show you guys the you know the dogs that i do have this is okay so right now he's talking about something very important also that needs to be no, uh, to be learned as someone who is keeping rabbits in your farm predators now rabbits are prey animals which means that other animals uh, try to hunt them down etc dogs snakes whatsoever you can think about they always try to attack the the rabbits you know and so if you have cats at home you have dogs at home be very worried if you are very playful with your dogs and they listen to you and then by all means there is a way you can make them know not to attack the rabbits i i am an example so i there's one dog at home i coached it it doesn't go near to the rabbits even if they fall off the cage it doesn't do anything to them but then there was another one that came to the frame that uh, didn't have any training whatsoever and within a short space of time it ate about two of my two or three of my rabbits and then injured a few also which i didn't like you know and so these are things you should be very careful and know when to do all these things in a very good way and it will help you once you know this you won't be hurt in any way of or, or any form or shape know what you are doing are you doing on a small scale for yourself at home just to have some meat are you doing it to to just a uh, while away time because you love them and you want to keep them as pets if so this shouldn't be the style you keep them the cages should be more bigger they should be free to move keep them in a more friendly way etc but if you are just going to eat them as meat be very careful uh, how you go about this type of things you know and it's going to always help you a lot and so that is, that is it in total. Um, it's a nice setup he has at home. The main focus for his farm is something for himself to eat. It could be the same thing, like I said, for you, or maybe you want to uh, also sell to some people in the neighborhood, etc. These are things you can always learn from, and um, it's always going to end up in a very good way. So thank you for watching with me. Thank you, Dr. Daniel, for sharing this video. My name is Modin. This is Rabbit and More. If you have anything you want to discuss with me, always do send me a comment uh, and i will definitely reply your comments also you can send me a message on whatsapp on plus two three three five zero two eight six zero five six six and i will always attend to you no matter where you are um if there were some things i said that you think uh, didn't sit well let's learn we are all learning this is a good platform for all for us all to learn have a good one and enjoy your day bye bye guys